what a fun night. That was a um, great night. Our fans were awesome. The energy in the building was, was great. And uh, I'm really proud of our group. We really prepared like an experienced team the last two days. And I thought we played like an experienced group, you know, defended excellently for 40 minutes and got into our offensive rhythm when we really needed to. Um, our guards were fabulous, controlling the tempo of things. But, um, you know, it's something for us to build on, and uh, we need a little bit of rest now because that's been a busy stretch for us. With everything that went into this game as far as points in the summer, would you have been surprised if you didn't give the effort that you got? There? I would have been. I, I was, you know, I, I'm glad we played them now because they're really young and talented and they're, you know, they're going to be better in January and February. But I was very confident about our group on this night. Um, it was interesting to hear people around the country, though. I, you know, uh, uh, I, I mean, we didn't look at it as an upset. We just kind of felt we have a team that's played together and, and could get into our rhythm against uh, a very talented young group. But, uh, and, and, you know, we're good here. We're so confident here. It's, uh, it's beautiful to watch. It's one of those, the way our guards were controlling things, uh, you didn't have to do a lot of coaching. Those guys were coaching the team. Eric Atkins running team, calling, calling sets. And when you have a veteran backcourt doing that, I just don't want to get in their way too much. John, uh, Mike, uh, John said that uh, you guys went at a point for in particular. What was it about that? that yeah, I, you know, we didn't really – a couple times we wanted to put him in a ball screen. And, and you know, he was guarding perimeter guards. He was on Jaron a lot. That's a tough matchup for a young uh, guy who's still making the transition to playing on the perimeter, then have to guard Jaron Grant uh, or even to be switched up on Eric Atkins. You know, those guys are veteran guards. They're good off the dribble. And, uh, you know, he got in foul trouble, thank God, and he never really got into a rhythm. I was very worried about him being able to keep him off the backboard. Luckily, foul trouble, we didn't, you know, we didn't have to play against him much. With about four minutes left, uh, Cooley got a layup block, then he picked up his fourth foul. Why didn't things fall apart, unravel right then? He comes back, makes a big play on yeah. uh, ball that doesn't hit the rim and beats the clock. I think poise, you know, um, uh, you know that, that group's pretty poised, uh, especially in this building. You know, we have had to hold people off. Um, we, you know, I thought we did a great job of getting on to the next play and not hanging our head if we had disappointment. And, and that's where we're better defensively. When we don't have good offensive stretches, we're still able to concentrate defensively. But I, again, I think our experience really helped us there. You know, Scott Martin doesn't have much of a first half, and then bang, bang, you know, uh, he gets us going there. And, you know, guys, I think guys are pretty good about not dwelling on a bad half or a bad stretch. No, it's going to come back around to them. Was it natural that Eric wasn't that aggressive that way? Was that needed? Was it I, think, I think it was something he sensed, Brian, and he need, and he's great at that. He, he sensed we needed it, and he went to work for us. And then we kind of inverted some of our sets where we were bringing him off like a two-man down on the baseline. You know, we, we ran a set to get him off a stagger to shoot a jump shot. I think that may have given us, gave us the lead, didn't it? Or tied it when we were down. It may have gave us our first lead that we never gave up. But um, he knows when we need to score it. Uh, I just love how he's playing. He in the balance of running our team, uh, scoring the ball, and then guarding a really good player and Goodwin staying in front of him all night was a heck of a challenge. Are you surprised they didn't go into the low post more in the first time? Well, you know, they that's how they play. They've been more dribble exchange, lob at the rim on rolls. Now, they did throw to the low post, and it started to get to us a little bit. You know, they were scoring over the top of us. My feeling was at that point with the lead we had, as long as we don't give up threes, I think it's going to be hard to come back on us because we're playing really slower on the other end. The clock's running. And um, if, if it's two-point jump hooks, I think we can absorb that. But they, they did start to hurt us. Early, they got so much in transition, they were excited about running by us because they were running by us a lot. Thank God we lucked out. Goodwin traveled a couple times in transition. He had layups, and we probably dodged some bullets there. Mike, you mentioned that uh, you're, you're happy you played them in November rather than January or February. Where, what sort of uh, transformation do you think they can make uh, 
You know, I, I think it'd be interesting to see Harrow come back into that point guard role. So maybe Goodwin can get off the ball and do some stuff. I think that could be an interesting thing for him. You know, I, I love Wilcher. He's really a talented guy. He's only a soft. He's going to get better and better, and he's going to become maybe a little bit of the man at times. And their young big guys are really talented. But you know, when you think about their perimeter, I love Mays. Mays is a man. You know, he's just a man and a steady guy. You, you wonder with, with, with Harrow back – um, in a month, do they flow differently because they've got that quarterback back? The rebounding job, the second chance points, how much will you have been to Yeah, I, I challenged us here two days ago. I said, you know, our, our front line, you know, I know you want to do over after the St. Joe thing. And I think the three of them all shook their head yes. To keep that group to one and done for the night was very much a key. I thought our perimeter came in and helped us a little bit. But Jack, Sherm, and Scott really were good in there rebounding the ball for us. And that was a big key to the game, that they didn't get second shots. Mike, you talked the other day about how fresh you were with Goodwin. You got the one for seven. You know, it, I think we were able to stop him in transition. And then our ball screen defense was really good tonight. And it's not always been good here for us. That's been a concern because Big East teams have ripped us up in ball screens when we've had our problems. But I thought our ball screen defense, our bigs helping out, our two guards are quick enough now and strong enough as they've gotten older to get over the top and get their chest back in front. And they, they did that on Goodwin tonight. He could never really turn the corner. And I, was, I thought he'd turn the corner more on us. So I, I'm pleased with our team defense on the ball screens he used. Mike, how do you feel like Cam handled first big? Awesome. And not surprised at all, man. He, he, he's, he's a bright lights guy. And to come in and score for us, he rebounded for us, too, in, in the first. He got us some big rebounds. Um, but uh, we ran an out-of-bounds play for him. He sticks a jump shot. I just feel good about him coming off and scoring. And he feels he belongs. And what's more important, the veteran guys feel, come on in here. We need him. Mike, how much do you talk to him about? Go ahead. What else? Yeah, you know, the shot clock was running down. I just told him, I said, you know, drive that thing. You may get a foul right there, not a fadeaway. You know, he was messing around with the ball. And he said, well, the shot clock. I said, just, you know, go. You know, and, and, and I just want to coach him a little bit. I didn't want to get on him because I made him to come back and make a shot. Um, and he's been so coachable, though. I, I am so pleased with how he's let us coach him and be integrated into the, this, this group. Mike, what did you see? Uh, with the crowd and the atmosphere affecting a young team? What yeah, you, I, you yeah, I've had teams in that situation, never that young. But, you know, um, it, it, can, it can make you play a little fast sometimes if you're young. It can make you take quick shots if you're young. It can rattle you a little bit. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I think it did that. And, and, you know, we've been in that situation. Our crowd was definitely our sixth man tonight. That building was electric. And... You know, having our football guys there was awesome. So, uh, but but it it was a tough atmosphere to play in. And when our atmosphere is like that, I, I don't care if you're young or old. It's probably going to be tough to win in there. Who came like a lot of buzz on the web about the uniforms. People can't see the numbers. Keep in rotation. <laughs> yeah, you know that's all part of the plan. You know, guys don't know how many fouls. They don't know who to call them fouls on. That way, I can move guys around. You know, uh, that's the first I've seen them. I knew we were going with the black and and with the green trim. Uh, the ones we had before a couple years ago were brighter green around the number, but, uh, you know, it's almost like our secret agent uniforms. You just don't know who's who. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, we, I, got, I tell you what, our guys love them, and the guys we're recruiting love them. So we're going to keep wearing them on the road. <laughs> Thank you. Oh!